108 academics and economists have expressed concerns of political interference uh, in Indian economic statistical data. Uh, the economists point to recent data controversies such as the revision in the GDP data uh, and also the decision to withhold uh, a report on unemployment statistics as incidents which have raised red flags. Uh, joining us now to talk about uh, some of these concerns in greater detail are two of the signatories. R. Nagraj is professor at IGIDR and uh, Mrithunjoy Mohanty is professor at IIM Calcutta. They are both joining us here today. Thank you so much indeed for taking the time uh, to speak to us. Uh, Professor Nagraj, if I may start with you and uh, you know, ask a very basic question. Uh, it's rare, if not unprecedented, to see uh, such a large uh, community and diverse community of academics and economists come together to sign a letter of this nature. What prompted this? Uh, yeah, first of all, thank you for having me in, on your show. Uh, yes, it's been a concern. Uh, simmering among economists for quite some time, ever since the GDP numbers were revised in 2015. And uh, uh, this, this view that uh, the, the official numbers are increasingly at variance with the reality uh, is being widely felt by economists. So when some of us uh, um, mooted this idea of, uh, of, a of a campaign, to then we, 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 disco we discovered a overwhelming response to our our, our appeal. Uh, so I was uh, I was pleasantly surprised that how widely how widely this concern has been uh, felt and expressed. So when we when we uh, when we started the petition, we were overwhelmed by the response we got we we got across the world. Professor Mahanti, similar question to you, and I'm I'm actually reading off the press release. You say that Indian statistics and institutions associated with it have come under pressure or are they come under a cloud for being influenced and controlled by political considerations. Uh, can you, in a sense, explain the basis of this allegation and your concerns? Well, it's 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 not it's not an allegation. We just as the as the statement sets out, we set out three or four instances where the, the data itself ha has been constantly revised and the basis for the revision it has not been ex ex adequately explained. Now, if every time it's a narrative doesn't fit and you want to revise data, then you call into question the data itself. Now, this is unprecedented, as in the, normally, the government, when government puts out data, the, the, the nature of the data has never been called into question. Uh, e economists being economists, and we love arguing and disputing, we always argue about what that data represents. But very rarely do we call into question the nature of that data. This, for the first time, in the way that it has happened, the fact that things keep being revised regularly, the fact that the data is withheld, and just yesterday they, they, they're, they're not going, they're not going to declare the Mudra employment data, which the, of the labor bureau. So this is what tends to then set us thinking as to why it is the case that the government wants to be so selective about what it wants to release. Uh, Professor Nagraj, I, I'm going to get into some of the specific data points that are raising concerns. For instance, uh, you know, the GDP data. Uh, uh, my question to you is twofold. One, was there a concern on the fact that there were two ways of backcasting the new series and that one was sort of, you know, uh, in some ways the government tried to push away that first uh, attempt and the second attempt was seen as official. Uh, is the nature in, uh, of these revisions uh, or the manner in which these revisions taking place causing a concern or the actual data and the fact, as you said, that it doesn't match with the feel of the economy, which a lot of people will pick up from the ground? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, you see, uh, back, creation of back series <coughs> is a mandate of any revision of uh, of GDP, GDP, and it's always been revised, and there are standard procedures for doing it. But this time, because the initial GDP revision had many, um, many, many changes, back, uh, creating back series was a, was a difficult task. In fact, 
the CSO and the statistical establishment did not do it for three years. And then after, th after three years, suddenly we found that we have, we, there are two back series and both showing divergent, uh, divergent estimates for the last, last decade. And, uh, and this, is, this left all the users uh, puzzled. How could this happen? And, and the explanation for the official estimates have not been adequately forthcoming, which only added to the public view that there is, these figures are probably uh, politically motivated. Uh, so, the, which is, uh, and also the fact that the, uh, the back series created by Central, uh, by the uh, National Statistical Commission was brought down and the official estimates are, uh, are put up on the, uh, uh, put up on the website, only lend credence to the view that these figures have unfortunately become very political. Uh, Professor Nagaraj, I have a follow-up question on this point of GDP. Uh, now, recently we got another series of revisions, which again uh, led to subsequent, you know, fairly uh, dramatic revisions, particularly in the year of demonetization. Uh, more than a percentage point uh, change in the growth rate uh, for the year yes. in which demonetization was announced. Uh, you know, I'm playing devil, devil's advocate here, Professor Nagaraj, because we don't have anyone from the official statistics department. Could it be that in years when there are uh, sudden shocks to the economy, either from the outside or from the inside, uh, the data only does get captured in you know, subsequent revisions rather than in the first estimates? Could that be an explanation at all, Professor Nagraj? Uh, you see, you're, you're right. You're right in the sense that in the years, uh, in the year six, uh, 2016 17, the latest revision shows uh, an increase of 1.1 percentage point. And this has baffled uh, most users because now we have the highest growth rate uh, uh, in, in that year. Uh, so, which, is, which has left everybody wondering, how could, how could there be such a, such a high growth rate of 8.2 percent in a year when, which is widely known to have been a, an economic shock? A, a shock which has which has which really took away jobs and output growth in so many informal industries so this is very counterintuitive how could how could a, how could the economy growth 8.2% and how could the estimate could have been revised upward by 1.1% mm. uh, in a year uh, for a year when there was a shock of this nature yeah. so which has only made uh, the the case of the critics stronger that these numbers seem to be politically motivated okay i, uh, th I mean th that is what and if if the if the government has given information uh, it, to explain this they would have been fine but the information given is so sparse that it only lends credence to the critics point of view okay professor mohan they come in on this you know take it from the point that that professor nagaraj is making so are you seeking greater transparency in methodology methodology are you asking for more information um, are you saying you know the data has errors or are you suggesting fudging to suit the political establishment what is it that you're saying we are first and foremost saying that the methodological basis for any revision must be very, very clear. It's only when we know why and how something has been changed that we can assess whether that, that change itself is valid or not. Now, if, if the government is unwilling to make clear the basis for these changes, then one is left asking the question as to why it is that the government would not want to share this. I'll come back to this point that disputing data is, is standard. There's always interpretations about what a, what a bunch of data says. But if we know what is the method that has been used to arrive at a certain data series, it makes that conversation much more fruitful. And if we do not know, then we are left asking the question why it is that such an important issue as GDP numbers, the government is unwilling to come up and, uh, and tell us what is the basis on which revisions have been made. In which case, how are we, how are we to assess the, the quality of those revisions? 
Professor Mohanty, uh, apart from the GDP data, uh, and I'll stay with you for this question, obviously, uh, you know, the next point of concern has been over statistics lim uh, linked to employment and unemployment. Uh, and I think there, more than the actual statistics, it's the manner in which, uh, you know, the government has tried to withhold some of this, which is a concern. Because, uh, you know, to be honest, with India's employment statistics, there's always been a, a debate about what they actually show, how much of it should be taken at face value. And that debate would have continued even if this report had shown a sudden pickup in uh, unemployment in the year of demonetization? I couldn't agree with, more with you, Ms. Jagal. It, it, it is absolutely the case that, that we would have argued about that whatever data came out. So when, when, we, when, they, do not, when they do not release data, and at least in GDP, there is a data, the basis for which we are not sure. With employment, unemployment, they, say, they, they do not release the government's own surveys. Now, I think it's very important also to remember that the quality of NSS or surveys is something that has been lauded worldwide. Among statisticians, the NSSO is seen as a very, very careful organization that carries out surveys of excellent quality. Now, despite that, there's always disputes about how you interpret that. Now, when the government takes an organization like the NSSO and withholds the data that they come up with, then you are again, you are left with very little but to say that this, the narrative that they've come up with is not the narrative that is represented in the NSSO story. The same for Labor, Labor, Labor Bureau data. So, one is not, not allowing for transparency of method. The other is withholding. Now, when you withhold, it really, really leaves very little space for any other interpretation than to say that the, there are other ends why the government is unwilling to release this data. Okay, Professor Nagaraj, the last word with you. What, how, can, how can we remedy the situation? What do you expect the government to do? Uh, no, no. The, it, it, immediately, I think the government should release the, uh, the employment unemployment data, and it has been it has been approved by National Statistical Commission, and it has been uh, it has been shown by it has been agreed by many experts that this data is perfectly comparable with the uh, earlier data of 2011-12. Uh, so if this data is released in full without any qualifications and it is official, then I think the, um, the immediate doubts about employment data will, will, will get reduced. On, on the GDP, I think there are much, many serious issues. There is a need for, need for uh, I think, a, a systematic review of the entire process. I think there's a need for a complete independent review of the, uh, review of the, the GDP revision. I think this is what I have said earlier, and I'm saying it, uh, saying it again. And way out in the short term would be if government releases a lot of details of its methodology and the data behind the, uh, behind the revision, I think some of the doubts may get clarified. Uh, Professor Mohanty, I also had a question on the role that Niti Aayog has been playing in, uh, you know, statistics uh, increasingly. Uh, do you have a thought on whether the structure of the body, uh, you know, makes it more political than economic and hence it should be kept away from, uh, you know, the process of economic data or, uh, you know, in contrast, can the formal role be crafted for the Niti Aayog in a manner that it doesn't uh, influence uh, politically some of this data? Planning Commission before the Niti Aayog and the Niti Aayog are, at the end of the day, political, uh, uh, have very strong political influence. Now, given that, they should have as little to do with the, the, the collection of data and the dissemination of data. Now, the creation of the National Statistical Com Commission was to that end, to ensure the fact that th that data is outside the purview of any organization that might have political influence. So Niti Aayog is perfectly cap capable and should be allowed to comment like ev everybody else. But Niti Aayog must not be the organization that becomes, that gets into the dissemination of data.
it's very, very important to ensure the fact that the organization that disseminates data, collects data, the data and disseminates that data is independent. And in this, I must say, I'm, I, I, I'm very, very disheartened by the, with the role that the Niti Aayog has played in, the, in this regard recently. Professor Nagraj, same question to you, actually, and, uh, you know, just as uh, to close off, uh, I'm curious to know whether the Niti Aayog has invited any of you to express these concerns or discuss these concerns with you, sir. Uh, no, I have not been invited. <laughs> okay, but what do you think of Niti Aayog's role in this process, which is becoming a bit more prominent than it should be, perhaps? <laughs> It should not have any role in the in the collection and uh, dissemination of the data. All right, uh, Professor Agrad Fadwanti, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to speak to us. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, for uh, watchers of the Indian economy, uh, a rare, almost unprecedented event to see uh, such a large number of academic economists come together and raise concerns about the integrity of the data.